Oh, so please do not forget to complete the register and then we can start with this week's session. Um, this week we're going to be looking at annuities and uh, we'll do a lot of other uh, activities just to see how we calculate annuities and remember we're going to still continue doing manually and also using your financial calculator if you do have one. Um, it is eight minutes past, but I can ask, do you have any question or comment or query that you want me to address before the session starts? Sorry, just a ma'am, did you post it? Um, is it in the chat? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Like I said, this week we're going to be looking at annuities. You need to have a calculator and you need to know the formulas to calculating or for calculating annuities. By the end of the session today, you should be able to do basic calculations when it comes to finding the present value of an annuity or the future value of an annuity. What do we mean by annuities? Annuities are just payments that you make at a regular interval or at a regular time or period. So it is your sequential equal payments at an equal interval of time so for example when you um, if you have a loan at the bank so you know that you always going to you you sign an agreement to say you're going to pay let's say three thousand five hundred every month so that will be your equal payments at an equal interval your interval will be the monthly payments that you are making and your equal payments will be those three thousand five hundred every month that you are paying so those, we call them annuities. Anyway, we can also refer to them as payments. <clears throat> so your payment interval will be the time between the successive payments that you are making. And this also depends on whether you doing you pay um, monthly, quarterly, yearly, um, biannually, and so on. The term will always refer to the period, how long you are going to pay that annuity or that payment. <clears throat> and it is always from the time from uh, it starts, you, you start calculating it from the beginning of the first payment up to the end of the last payment in cover. Your future value will be the cumulative amount of the payments that you have made, including interest. So it will be the sum of all payments made, um, including also the interest at the end of the term. And your present value will be the sum of all the payments that you have made. And these are each discounted to, uh, to the beginning of the term. So, how are you going to remember this in a way? You need to remember that uh, savings, you get money at the end, right? It's savings, you only get cumulated amount, which is your, your, your saving amount that you have accumulated at the end. With savings, if they talk about saving, 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 always know that you will be calculating the future value. Most of the time, loans, which are the money that the bank give you, it's now, 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 it's already discounted amount, right? They tell you that they, you apply for a bond to buy a house and they tell you that the bank say, I can give you 1 million for that house. But you will still need to pay me, including interest at the end of the term when you finish off paying your, your, your bond. But because the bank is giving you money and that we call it the present value. So how you will remember savings, 
future value. Loans, present value. Right? If they give you a question and they talk about savings, you need to know that you are given the future value. If they say uh, Patrick saved 100,000 or needs to save 100,000 after four years, that 100,000 is the future value. It's something that they will need to save up for. If they say Patrick went to the bank and the bank gave him the loan to buy a car, that loan is your present value because the bank gives you the money now. You have the money to buy something with it. it then you will be calculating the present value. Okay. With annuities as well, like we did with compounding periods, you still also need to know your compounding periods because if it's compounded monthly, therefore it means also your payments will be made monthly. If it's compounded quarterly, so your payments, you will pay your, you will do your payment quarterly. If it's yearly, you will pay your payment yearly. It's very important to know your compounding periods because they affect how you multiply your period because your periods needs to always multiply with the compounding period and or your term needs to multiply with the compounding period and also your interest needs to divide by the compounding period. So it's very, very important that you know your compounding periods. Okay, so in order for us to calculate the present value of an annuity, and I must say also with this formula, you are still going to use it when you do amortization because amortization is based on the loan. And therefore, remember what I told you just a minute ago, loans are always present value. So when we deal with amortization, you are still going to use the same formula to calculate your payments. So to calculate the present value of an annuity, we use P is equals to R times the accumulation factor of one plus interest to the power of the term minus one divided by your interest times one plus your interest to the power of N, which is your term. Now, you're gonna ask, how do, how do we calculate this? This is just a short version of writing the accumulation factor and this, you can write it when you are using your financial calculator to do the calculation because you're not going to substitute the values. So you can just say P is equals to R times the annuity of N I, which is just the accumulation factor of an annuity for that payment, right? So we're going to learn how to use this formula to calculate the present value of an annuity where your R is your payment and the other, like your I is your interest, which you need to divide by the compounding periods, and your N is your term, which you need to multiply by the compounding periods. P is your present value, right? So if we need to calculate the present value of 1,600 quarterly payments for five years at an interest rate of 20% per annum compounded, monthly. The question is asking us to calculate the present value. What are the facts given in the question? We are given quarterly payments, which means we are given um, uh, our payments, which is our R. So of 1,600, and they say it's quarterly payment. So Obviously, somewhere they will tell us that it's compounded quarterly. If they didn't tell us that it's compounded quarterly, we can assume that this is compounded quarterly. If they gave you a compounded value which is different to the monthly payment, therefore it means your monthly payments, you will need to, uh, to change them or convert them to the quarterly payments or whatever the compounding periods are. But usually they are aligned. And what else are they giving us? We are given five years, which is our N, and we are given our interest, which is our I. And we are told that the compounding period 
they are quarterlies, so there will be four of them. Now I need to identify the formula. I know that the formula that we need to use is P is equal to so R times the accumulation accumulative factor of an annuity. Then we can substitute into the formula. Remember, your interest needs to be divided by the compounding periods of four, and your period needs to be multiplied by five. So you can do this outside because if you put it into the equation, your equation will be too much. So for example, like I did it, I included my division of the interest and multiplication of my term in the equation. As you can see, it looks complex. However, if I could have just taken 20%, which is 0 0.20 divided by four, which will give me a 0 0.05 or 0 0.5, what is four divided? 0 0.2, 0 divided by 4 is, let me use a calculator because it has been a long day, so let me not over stretch my brain. 0 0.20 divided by 4 is 0 0.05. Okay, I was right at the beginning. It's 0 0.05. I could have substituted to 0 0.20. 0, 0 0.20 divided by 4 by 0 0.5 and 5 divided by oh sorry 5 multiplied by 4 is 20 i could also have just substituted there by 20 instead of substituting it into the formula as well so the formula would have looked like this 1600 times 1 plus 0 0.5 to the power of 20 minus 1 divided by 0 0.5 times 1 plus 0 0.5 to the power of 20. And when you simplify the whole equation, you get the present value of this payment, which was made quarterly of 1,600. The present value is 19,939. So that is if you don't have a financial calculator, you can calculate manually by using this. If you have a financial calculator, you can do the same by following the steps. So also on your financial calculator steps, you also need to identify what the question of first, what is the question asking you to do in your own time? They are asking us to calculate the present value. So I'm going to say they are asking us to compute PV because I'm looking at, remember, the functions are the same. We're still going to use those three functions or those, those functions, the first line function, the ENT, the plus or minus, the mode, the on and off, and the second function. All those are our friends for now. While we do this, as you can see that they're the same functions that we used previously as well. So, so we are computing the present value. So that's what we need to be computing, PV. What have they given us? They gave us the payment. Now on your calculator, there is no R, it's PMT. So they have given you PMT of 1,500, the number of years is N, keep it as a capital letter because that's what on your calculator you see, and your rate is I slash Y, and remember those who are calculating or using your financial calculator, I and Y is 20, we keep the percentage. If you are calculating manually, you need to divide it by 100, or you can use your function on your calculator. So now I have everything I need, then I can write my steps. It's very important to first write the steps before I can take my calculator and calculate. So the first step, I need to clear my calculator from any stored values. That is the very important, remember that? Clear your calculator from any stored values. Step number two, we need to capture 
the compounding periods. So our compounding periods, or oh, I didn't finish. Our compounding periods, which is P slash Y, is equals to four. So our compounding periods, there are four. So we need to capture them. So second function, P slash Y, four is our compounding periods, E and T. The next step is to go on and off our calculator. And then we need to capture what we are given. So at the moment, we're given payment, a number of years, and interest. Now, there is no order in which you can put anything that follows here. So we can start with interest. We can actually say um, 20. We can say 20, I and Y. And we can go and say plus or minus the payment, which is 1,600 and we press PMT, and then we go and say five years, and we press second function. Remember, we always have to multiply your period by the compounding period. Second function, N, N again. And I'm saying N, N again, because the first second function multiplies with the compounding period, which is the yellow part. And then the second N is to capture or to store your value. And once you are done there, you can comp and then you say PV. It will give you the same answer. Or you can start with the payment first. Like I will do now. You can start with the payment. Remember, for payment present value, any one of them, it only one of them. If they are two of them, one of them should have a plus or minus before. Otherwise, you will get a negative answer. Always remember to press the plus or minus. That is the plus or minus, not the, not the negative and positive or the plus sign and the minus sign from the basic operations. The plus or minus that, uh, function. So we put the payment. Then the next part is to put in the number of years, the term, five second function N, N again. And then we put the interest, 20. We put it as we see it, 20, I and Y. And the last part is to comp PV, which will give us 19,939.54 cents. And now, once you have written your steps, then you can take your calculator and start calculating. And that will be it. You have answered your question. And that is present value of an annuity. Your exercise. Let's see if you listen to me. What is the present value of an annuity of 1,500 payable at the end of six months period for two years if the money is, is worth 8% compounded semi-annually? Now, you've got two things here mentioned. Six months, semi-annually. What is it that they are asking you to calculate? The present value. So let's start first with the manual calculations. So we need to comp, compute or calculate. I'm gonna make it like this because on my rough paper, um, I'm gonna say my P, that's what I need to be calculating. They have given me my payment, which is R, 1,500. They told me my N is two years. They told me that my I is 0, 0,08. And now I want to come to those two terms. Semi-annually, six months. What is semi-annually? It means biannually, right? Because semi means two, or semi means half. 
so if semi means half or two, then six months will mean half of the year, right? Because a year is made up of 12 months. If I split them in half, there will be six months for one, six months for the other part. So they mean one and the same thing. You just need to make sure that you understand the terminology that they give you, uh, whether they give you biannually or they give you six months or they give you a semester or things like that, things that you can sometimes make sense of, but just broaden your, your mind in terms of the keywords that they might give you in the question and try and, and, and make sense of them. So since our compounding period is two, therefore we need to divide our interest by two, we need to multiply our periods by two, right? That's what we, we know we need to do. So this will be equals to four, and this will be equals to 0, 0,04 because 0, 0,08 divide, divide by 2 will just be 0, 0,04. Your formula that you need to be using, P is equals to your payment times 1 plus your interest to the power N minus 1 divide by interest times one plus your interest to the power n and you can just substitute into the formula now go into those who are calculating using your financial calculator you do the same you are asked to comp you can also just write pv you need pv you are given PMT of 1,500, you are given N of two years, you are given I and Y of eight. That's how you will write it. And what else? Your compounding period, your P slash Y of two. Remember the steps. I'm not going to substitute the values. You need to substitute the values. I'll write the steps for you. It's second function, CA, always clear your calculator. Second function, P slash Y, where I put the blank. You need to know what you need to put in there because I'm not going to give it the value just yet. And then you need to go on and off your calculator. Then you go plus or minus. There should be a value somewhere here, which corresponds to your PMT because that's what you are given. And there should be a value here corresponding to your interest. And there should be a value here, which you need to multiply by the compounding period and store the value and then TV. The steps are almost exactly the same as the previous one. Instead of using the payment and computing the future value, we just put the, what we are given and computing whatever we ask to compute. Are we winning? Just a second, ma'am. Yeah. No, I just wanted to check if I am not losing you. You are not confused.
Um, I got 6,000. I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Are we done? Um, I'm done, and I think Leslie's done as well. For the first time, I actually got my calculator to work with me. Thank you, ma'am. Five, four, four, eight, four. That's what you, you say the answer is. So let's see. If the, the answer is wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your R is 1,500 times one plus i'm gonna use the value that we just calculated which is 0 0.04 to the power of four minus one divide everything by 0 0.04 times one plus 0 0.04 to the power of four i don't know what the answer is there those who calculated using the financial calculator, you would have put here two, you would have put here 1,500 and eight and two. Let me double check with my financial calculator. Unfortunately, financial calculator, I cannot demonstrate because it's an actual calculator and I don't have a, a, a tool to read it where it's easier for you to be able to see. So second function, CA, which is the mode. Um, second function, P slash Y, two, enter on and off your calculator plus or minus 1500 pmt 8 i and y 2 second function n n again comp pv and the answer i get is 5,444.84.286. So we round it off to two decimal because it's money. Money always, we round it off to two decimals. So it's 5444,84, which is option two. Leslie, you got it right. Well done, Leslie. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to how we calculate the, oh, that's too late. How we calculate the future value of an annuity. Now, remember, present value was loans, future value is savings. So calculating the future value of an annuity, we use this formula, S is equals to R times one plus i to the power n minus one divided by i, where r is your payment, s is your future value, i is your interest, n is your term, right? Let's look at an example. Jack will need 20,000 to buy his brother's car in two years' time. He wants to start saving part of his weekly salary into an account that returns 8.5 interest per year, compounded weekly. Calculate the minimum weekly payment that he needs to make into the investment account to have enough in two years time. 
very long sentence. Okay, so what is it that they want us to calculate here? Yeah? The question is asking, calculate the weekly minimum payment. So it means they are asking us to calculate R. Not like the previous one, where they were asking us to find the future value, or, sorry, the present value. So now they, uh, they want us to find what will be that future value or what, sorry, what will be the, the, the payment, not the future value, the payment. So what is it that they have given us? Jack will need 20,000. So 20,000, it means at the end, we'll need 20,000. So 20,000 is our future value. Remember savings? future value to buy his brother's car in two years time so i'm going to assume that two years time because also in the question they talked about two years that is our period maybe i should not be using f's and let's start firstly with the manual calculations so our future value is s of twenty thousand. I did there because I've got steps here. Your R is what we're looking for. Your future value, which is your S, in two years' time, that is N. And they say he's going to use his weekly salary, right? But we also know that it is compounded weekly. And the interest, which is our I, And I can write it 0, 0,085. You must write it the way you see it, all of it. Do not round it up. You must write it the way you see it. So this was two years. And our compounding period, they were how many? Let me ask you, how many? What are our compounding periods for weekly? How many weeks do we have in a year? 52. 52. 52, yes. There will be 52 of them. So now, what is the formula that we need to be using? That is the formula, right? Remember, you can divide your I outside, divide it by the compounding periods, which there are 52, multiply your periods by 52, and so on before you substitute into the formula and not follow what I do because me, I just put it in the formula. So our S is 20,000. R is what we're looking for. One plus our interest, which will be 0, 0,085 divided by 52 to the power of your N. N is two times 52 minus one divided by our interest of 0, 0.85 divided by the compounding periods of 52. And when we calculate this, simplify, and the answer we will get would be, because we just divide by the accumulation factor, which is 113.23469. 20,000 divided by that gives us 176 ranked 58. So from his monthly salary, if he wants to make 20,000 in two years, saving it every two weeks, uh, every week, uh, um, every week, he will get 20,000. If he save 176, which will be option number one. So similar, you can use your calculator, your um, financial calculator to calculate. The steps are exactly the same. What is it that they want us to calculate? They want us to calculate PMT, which is payment. That's what they want. The weekly minimum payment. That's what we, we need to calculate. Uh, what are we given? We are given the future value 
we are given how long, which is our N. We are told what the interest is, that is I slash Y. We are given the compounding periods, P slash Y, which they are 52. Now we can go and do, write up our formula. Clear our calculator from any stored values. Second function, CA. Then put in the compounding period. Second function, PY, 52, E and T. On and off your calculator. Put in what you are given, which is the future value. So plus or minus 20,000 future value. Then the interest, 8.5. The period to second function n n again. Comp PMT when you comp PMT your answer will be one seven six point five eight. Let's do another activity to see if you understand. Find the lump sum that one must invest in an annuity in order to receive 1,000 at the end of each month for the next 16 years. If the annuity pays 9% monthly, uh, or oh, 9% compounded monthly. Now, this question, they've asked it in a way that it's not a normal way of asking a lot of questions. Like, for example, we know that we say someone borrowed money, they need to pay it back. Or somebody is saving money, and this is how much they will have. And here they're asking you, what will be that lump sum that somebody will get? Or somebody must invest in an annuity in order to receive a thousand rent. So that thousand rent is a payment of some sort, right? It's an annuity of some sort. So now we need to calculate what will be that lump sum. That needs to be invested. What is that saving that needs to be invested in order for it to receive a thousand at the end of each month? For the next 16 years, if the annuity pays 9%. So ask yourself, is this a present value or is this a future value? It's a future value. The present value. This will be the it will be the present value or the future value. I hear two two answers. So present present value. It seems like it's a present value because if it will be Because the 1,000, you will be getting it for the next 16, 16 years, right? So this lump sum should be your present value because it's something that you put in now. It's not something that you need to be calculating for the future, right? Okay, so if this is our present value, But it is an investment. And we know with an investment, we set investment up, future, future value. So if this is an investment, therefore, this will be your future value. 
always remember that savings, investments are what we call future values. Yeah. So let's calculate the future value S is equals to R times because we know what payment we will be receiving from this future value of the lump sum that needs to be in plus I to the power of N minus one divided by I. So you need to find your payment, your N and your interest. Which is 0 0.09 compounded monthly. So you will have to divide it by, by 12. And those who are using financial calculator, second function CA, second function E slash Y. What is your compounding period? E and T on and off your calculator. Plus or minus, what is the value of your payment? Your interest and your period, second function, and, and again, and comp. What is it that you will receive after this? that will enable you for next 16 years to be able to get 1,000 rand every month. Are we winning?
I'm not winning. Me neither. Well, are you guys getting I'm gonna try 8, one more time. I'm gonna try one more time. What's the value you're getting? 44 something. Not that, but I'm gonna do it I, again. One second. One second. I'm getting 68. Wait, wait. I'm gonna do it again. What's that? Okay, so we're looking for the future value of this lump sum because you are investing it, right? So it means at the end you will get something, but it should that something should enable you to be able to get every month for the next 16 months, uh, 16 years, for the next 16 years to receive every month a thousand rand, right? That S will be R of a thousand times one plus your interest of zero comma zero nine. Since I didn't divide by twelve, I'm going to include it in the formula. Uh, how long? Sixteen times twelve minus one. Divide by 0, 0,09, divide by 12. And you will get that. If you are using your financial calculator, just want to change the color of my pen, go back to my red, but I like. So your second function, compounded monthly, that's 12. Payment, thousand of them. Interest, nine. Year, sixty. When you come, that will be how much? What do you get? I know where you went wrong. I know where you went wrong. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I that's said, that's it 12 instead of the 16 at the end, which is silly. I should have known. Huh. Yeah, let's look at more examples or more exercises. A farmer needs 250,000 to purchase a one ton, a, a 10 ton trailer. The bank approves the loan for a full amount. So the bank will give him. 250,000. The interest rate is 18% per year, compounded monthly. The loan has to be paid off in five years' time. Determine the minimum monthly payment. Okay. We know that we're looking for R, right? That's what we are looking for. We are given a farmer needs. 250,000, the bank approves the loan of the full amount. Is this a present value or a future value? Present, present value. Loan, 
are always present value. Savings, always future value. Savings or investments. So this is our present value because that's the money that they will get now. The interest is 18, which will be 0, 0,18 divided by the compounding periods. They are 12 compounding period. And how long? Five times. Five years times. It's 12. So we use the formula S, the formulas here. Oh, we, it's the present value, so you need to use the right formula. So for the present value, so P, R times one plus I to the power N minus one divide by i times one plus i to the power n. So you just substitute into the formula. Your payment is what we're looking for. Your p is 250,000. Your i, I didn't calculate it, so I'm just gonna write the value as I have them. If you have calculated it, you will know which. Five times 12 is 60. I hope that I still know that. Five times 12 is 60. Minus one divided by 0, 0,18 divided by 12 times one plus 0, comma. 1, 8 divided by 12 to the power of 60 because that one is easy to calculate. Take the accumulation factor divided by 250 that will give you your R. By taking your 250,000 divided by everything that is underneath the bracket. Those with a financial calculator, second function, a second function p slash y put in the compounding period ent on and off your calculator plus or minus 250,000 and that is your present value Ooh, why did i give you the amount I usually don't give the amount because I'm giving you all the answers now. And that you will be your I and Y. Second function. And N again. And comp. EMT. Let's see if you can get this one right. When you are done, you can just call out the the number that you it's correct. I think I'm done. Yeah, which one? 
Number four. Number three. Oh, I got number four. It is number oh, four. Let's go back. <laughs> okay, let's see. The compounding periods, there are 12. 250,000, I've already given you. 18. And the number of years, there are five. The only difference between when you calculate manually and when you are using your financial calculator is that your interest year, you don't have to divide by the compounding periods because your calculator knows. You also do not have to convert it to a decimal. You use it as you see it. And the answer would be number four. And I also see with the calculator. Okay, okay. We okay. train. Yes. Uh, PMT to present value, and at the end, it's comp, not present value, it's comp PMT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Cherry wants to take a family to a vacation in two years' time. Suppose she deposits 192.86 in the beginning of every week into an account earning 9.2% interest per year, compounded weekly. Determine the amount she will have in two years' time, which looks almost the same as the previous one. I'll we'll start with the financial calculator one. I'm just going to write, I'm not going to identify what is given. I'm just going to write the formula and then you solve it yourself and tell me which one is correct. So I'm just going to write the steps down because it's very important to write the steps before I use the calculator. Now the challenge comes here because now I need to give you what is given. So yeah, we are given PMT, but you just need to go and figure out yourself. Are we winning? I'm done. Which one? Oh, I, I didn't calculate. So wait, my bad. Oh, so much I wait. You can just wait. It will take me a second. Uh,
Okay, done. Which one? Number four. Great. So therefore it means you did everything, right? Your payment is 192.86 times one plus your interest. Since I didn't calculate that, it's going to give me a very long number. I'm just going to substitute the way I see it on the on the screen to the power of 2 times 52, which is 104, right? Hundred and four. That should be fine. Minus one divided by zero point two zero nine two divided by fifty two. And the answer you will get here will be twenty two zero 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 point zero zero five, which we rounded off to to one. Okay, so let's see if you did calculate correctly and substitute correctly on the other side. Um, your compounding period is compounded weekly. We have established that it's 52. Your payment is 192.86. Your interest is 9.2. Your period is two years. And when you come, it will give you number four. Happy? Are we good? Are we good? Oh, moving on to number three. Ronald saved a total of hundred and sixty-five thousand. If every year he has deposited. 28,500 into the account, earning 6.04% per annum. How long? How long, rounded to one decimal place, did it take him to accumulate the total amount? Now you need to ask yourself, what is it that they have given you and what are they asking you? They are asking you to calculate how long the interest he deposited the amount in the account earning 6% per annum, the accumulated amount, and they are asking you how long. Since on year they didn't say anything about compounding periods, but they are also telling you how often did they deposit the money? Therefore, it makes it a annuity because it says every year he would deposit into the account this much. So on a sequential, remember, sequential payment at an equal interval. Yearly, the payments were the same of 28,500. So we are told the future value, which is also the S, we are told every year means compounded annually. Our compounding period will be one. The amount deposited, which is the payment, which will be your R or your PMT. Your interest, which is your I or your I and Y, depending on whether you are using a calculator or financial calculator or you calculate in manual n or n so right now based on this information we know that we have the future value so we need to use the future value of an annuity which is s times one plus i to the power n minus one divide by i or we use second function DA, second function, I always, even if it's one, I always prefer to use the compounding period step so that I don't forget even in the future as well. So 
you will see that you know? second function p slash y our compounding periods i'm just gonna put the one since it is yearly and you can go on and off your calculator you don't for a year you don't even have to do this step but i just like to do it anyway plus or minus you're gonna put there your because you are given the future value and you are also given the present value one of them can have a plus or minus so i'll use the 165 165 000, it will have my plus or minus and that will be my future value and you put in your interest which the 6.04 and that is your ini and you will put in the how long is what we don't have, but we have the payment, which is 28,500. That is our PMT. So I could have just done the PMT before the interest. It doesn't really matter. Comp. We need the how long. Comp N. Now, I'm going to explain this uh, later on as well. Let me do the, the site. So we know what our future value is. It's 165,000. Our R is 28,500. One plus our interest. Now our interest is needs to divide by the compounding periods. Our compounding period is it's is one, so it will be zero comma zero zero comma zero six zero four divided by one, which is the same to the power of n. N is what we don't know, and this is where it becomes so complex because if you don't have a financial calculator, this question is gonna take you forever to answer it, right? Because you will panic or give up from here 0, 0,0604. I'm going to help those who don't have a financial calculator. So we're going to take 165 divided by 28,000. So let's do that. 165,000 divided by 28,500, which is equals I'm going to write only the answer to that. I get 5,78. And you must write the whole of it. Don't take shortcuts. Equals. Uh, because I've already done the division. What is left here, I need to get rid of the 0, 0,06. So it means I must multiply by 0, I must take this, multiply it by 0, 0,0604. And what will be left will be everything that is at the top, which is 1. Plus, okay, this inside I can add them together as well, and that will be one comma zero six zero four to the power of n minus one. What I can do, I can bring minus one to the other side, but before I do that, let's multiply our previous answer, multiply by point zero. 604 equals and my answer this side is 0, 0,3497 684 and I must take one to the other side it will be plus one is equals to 1,0604 to the power of n. And if I add this side, 1 plus 0, 
it will be one comma. So, because I'm just already doing the math, and this 10 changes to one, one comma that. In order for us to get n down, we need to apply the logarithm. So we're going to say n times the log of one comma zero six zero four. And this side also the log of one comma three four nine six eight four. Now to get n on its own, we need to divide by the log. So if I take this log, divide it this side. Oh, my pen is doing its own thing. Divide this side by the log of one comma zero six zero four which means this site I will be left with N. I hope you are able to follow. And the answer will be equals to. What will be the answer? The log, uh, where is my log on the financial calculator? I need to go find my log. Uh, where is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's on button number one. So, second function log, open bracket, one comma three four nine six. Did I miss a number? Uh, I didn't miss any number. Six eight four. Close bracket. Divide by the log. Second function log of open bracket, one comma zero six zero four, close bracket, equals, the answer I get is five comma one one three two. And they said round it off to one decimal. And when you round it off to one decimal, you get five comma one, yes. If you also multiply or you do your financial calculator, you will get your answer of 5,1. Yes. Which is option two. Am I right? So you just, those who yeah, don't bro. know yes, how to use right. your calculator or you don't have a financial calculator, you need to know how to use the logarithm. I know that I took a shortcut, but I hope you will be able to follow what I have done when I was taking a shortcut because I don't have enough space here. Okay. That's how you would have answered this question in your assignment because it was part of your assignment. We left with eight minutes. Okay, let's see the next one. Dineo decided that she will save 3,500 per quarter over the next four years. She will make the first deposit into a savings account in three months time. She will make her last deposit at the end of four years now. At the end of four years, if the interest is end at 6.68% per annum compounded quarterly, what will be Dineo's total amount? Okay. Sure. Let's read that again so that we understand and highlight the facts given. So we know that we need to calculate the total amount, which is um, whatever is it, the savings. Yes, for savings, so it will be the future value. That's what we need to be calculating. Dineo has decided to save 3,500, so that is an annuity because they say per quarter, so therefore it means already they told us that this is our payment, which is PMT, over the next four years. That is your N, right? She will make, oh, yeah, she will make the first deposit into the savings account in three months' time. So remember, this is quarterly. So Quarterly, three months. Take it into consideration. Three months, equivalent to a quarter. A quarter is made up of 
three months. She will make her last deposit at the end of the four years. At the end of the four year, the interest end will be 6.8% per annum compounded quarterly. So already we now know what our compounding periods, there were four. Our interest is 0, 0.06. There are two sixes, so it should be 6.68. Six and you can divide that by four if you want. Let's see if I divide that by four, how much I get it so that I don't have to substitute the whole thing. 0 0.0668 divide by four. I hope it's not a long number. Yeah, it's a long number, but it's fine. Since I calculated it, it makes it easy for me to use that. One six seven. You need to keep all the numbers, right? And your four years, which is your term, so it will be four times times four, which is equivalent to sixty. This is only for those who are calculating manually. So let's do it for those who are calculating manually. So this is future value. So it's S is equals to your payment times one plus your interest to the power of n minus one divided by interest, which makes it easier. Future value is what we're calculating. You will need to go and calculate 3,500 times one plus your interest. We did calculate it, it's zero comma. 0167 to the power of 16 minus 1 divided by 0, 0,0167. And then you can go and find the answer. Those who are calculating using the financial calculator, steps are the same. Second function, CA. Second function, P slash Y. What is our compounding periods? E and T on and off your calculator. Plus or minus, what is it that they have given us? I think the first one is the payment. How long? Second function. N and again, our interest. I and Y. And we need to comp the future value. That's straightforward. So let's see if we can get it right. I will calculate manually. You will calculate using your, your financial calculator. Someone will tell me how much. What will be the accumulated amount? So let's see. I will start with the one that is inside the bracket, 1 plus 0. Point. So me, I'll calculate manually. already have my answer. I'm waiting for you. Got number two. Nope. Is it number two? Check number correct. three, number three, sorry, number three, 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 three. Number three. Yes. Uh, I was going to have a heart attack. I'm, I'm thinking, must I recalculate because I'm calculating manually now. I must three, go three. and do, use the financial calculator. So it's number three is the answer. The answer is 63591.51883. So which to two decimal, it will be five two. So those who have used your 
financial calculator, your values will be as follows. Compounding periods, there are four. Payment, 3,500. The year, there are four. Interest, 6,68. And you should also get the same answer. Okay. One last exercise, and then we are gone. Um, there are a couple of exercises that I've included, but some of them they should be straightforward. Now I bought a house for one thousand. Oh, sorry, one million three hundred in Pretoria Mokelneck. She obtained a mortgage loan at 12.57% per annum compounded monthly with a term of 20 years. Her monthly payment would be so. What is this? Is it future or present? Is it this a present value or a future value? A million? Present value. It will be your present value. Your interest compounded monthly. So your compounding periods, they will be 12, right? Your term and your Payment, which is what we need to be calculating, PMT. So I'll start with the manual. P is equals to R times 1 plus I to the power N minus 1 divided by I 1 plus I to the power N. So our I is 0, 0,1257 divided by compounding periods. There are 12. Can I just calculate that? 0.1257 divided by 12 is a very long number. I'm just going to write it here. 0, 0,01. It might even be longer than the one I have here yeah, because my calculator is on six decimal. Let me change the decimals. Um, display zero, tap zero, nine. Okay, there yeah, are all of them. Zero comma, zero one, zero four, seven five. You need to write all of them when you are using the um, manual calculations and your N will be 20, 20 years times 12, which should be, I think, 240, right? That is 240. Let's substitute. Present value, oh, we need to start with the present value. It's a million. Equals the payment, that's what we need. I'm going to change the formula a little bit. I'm going to start with the payment. I'm just going to divide P by the accumulation factor. So R will be equals to 1 million. Divide by the accumulation factor. So I'm, I'm doing it vice versa, which is 1 plus 0, 0,010475 to the power of 240 minus 1 divided by 0, 0, 0,1 0, 0,475 times 1 plus 
zero comma zero one zero four seven five to the power of two foot. I shouldn't have put the bracket to restrict me. <coughs> can close the bracket. So you'll have to calculate that. Those who are calculating using the financial calculator, you should get the answer before me. Second function CA, second function P slash Y. What is your compounding period? E and T. On and off your calculator. Plus or minus. They have given you a present value, so you can just put the value of a present value. What is the interest given? And how long? Second function, n, and again, and then comp, EMT. So me, I'm gonna use manual calculation. You calculate with your financial calculator. Let's see who gets it first. One zero 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 three million. One million. I hope there are enough. I got number four. Oh, hey, you are so quick. I am still going. <laughs> mm. uh, manual calculation, you see, it takes long. But I will get there. Just give me a few seconds. Right, right. I am almost done. 240. My answer is 1483.4.026. Which one did you get? I got 14830. 14834.026, which is 03. So you also get the same. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Thank you very much for this. And for especially the if yeah, if you have a cash you just need to also know how to use your cash calculator so that then it doesn't take you long. I use the fraction for the cash calculator. So I did the first fraction just to get the million and the, the bottom one. And then I went back to the bottom one and I did an, um, brackets and then I included the fraction again inside the bracket. So I hope I had my calculator on so that I can show you how to do that. But next week when we do amortization, I will, I will try to activate my calculator online because it keeps on booming out, especially with the with the load shading. Um, my calculator doesn't hold any longer, so it bombs out every time I need to activate the license. So that is annuities actually. And I've also included in the notes shared with you guys um, in the notes section um additional other information but some of this because amortization and annuities they relate in terms of present value payments so we're going to still you will see that some of these um exercises you might also see them again next week when we do amortization because we are the, then after calculating the present value of an a loan we need to amortize it um, so you you might see that, uh, especially when it when we deal with loans. So anyway, there is questions exercise six, exercise seven, which you, comes from your um, assignment. I think you can go through that again. If you were not sure when you were submitting your assignment, now you can go back and see if are you getting the right answers now. 
So in conclusion, we have learned um, how to do basic calculation when it comes to future value of an annuity and the present value of an annuity. I will see you next week. Have a lovely, lovely evening and enjoy load shedding. And I guess today it was good for us because we didn't cut off due to load shedding. Thank you very much. Please remember to complete the register. And bye. Bye-bye.